Welcome back to another AP Computer Science Principles Multiple Choice Practice video. Uh, this is part three of this series, so let's go ahead and jump in. So this one says, the following question uses a robot in a grid of squares. The robot is represented as a triangle, which is initially in the bottom left square of the grid and facing right. So then it says, consider the following code segment, which moves a robot in a grid. First, we set n equal to three, and then we have this outer loop which we'll repeat three times. And inside of that, we have another loop where we repeat that logic n times. So we move forward n times and then continue with the rest of the logic for the hour loop, which is rotate left and set our n equal to n minus one. Okay. So then it asks, which of the following shows the location of the robot after running the code segment? And we have four grids where the robot is in different parts of the grid. So let's go ahead and run it and let's see where our robot ends up being. We set our n equal to three right off the bat. Then we go ahead and we repeat this outer logic three times. Okay. The first part of the outer loop logic is actually an inner loop where we repeat this n times. And since n is equal to three, we're going to repeat this three times. So first we're going to move our robot forward three times. So it started in that bottom left square and it's going to move one, two, three times. So we're done with the first part of that outer loop for the first iteration. Then we rotate left. Okay. So now we've rotated left and then we're going to set n equal to n minus one. So if we were keeping track of our n here, our n is now equal to two. So we did the first loop of the outer logic. Now we need to do that two more times. Once again, we want to do the inner for loop first. So now our n is actually equal to two. So we are only going to be moving forward two times. So one, two, then we rotate left again, right? We do this logic here, rotate left. And then we set our n equal to n minus one. So now it is not two, now it is one. Okay, so now we're on our final iteration of the outer loop. We're going to repeat moving forward n times n is equal to one. So we're only going to move forward once. So we're going to end up here. Then we're going to rotate left. So we're now facing down. And then we're going to set n equal to n minus 1. So now our n is equal to 0. And we've done all three of our outer loop iterations. So there's no more logic to run. So I would say this is the final location of the robot. So let's see if any of them match up. So we're kind of like smack dab in the middle of the grid and facing down. So it looks like the correct answer here is A. B does not work because it's not in the right spot. C also does not work and D does not work because it is not in the right spot. So I would say with this problem, the way you want to solve for it is really just kind of going slowly and making sure you're doing all the logic and you're noticing that you'll be modifying how many times you're running the inner loop as you run through the outer loop. All right, moving on to the next problem. This says, which of the following algorithms require both selection and iteration? Okay, and then it says to select two answers. So before we dive into the answers, let's go ahead and talk about what these two words mean, selection and iteration. So when you think selection, I want you to think if else. So selection is selecting what part of the algorithm to execute depending on some sort of criteria. So if some condition is true, execute this code. Otherwise, if some other thing is true, execute this. Otherwise, do this. Okay, so selection, you want to think if else. Iteration, when you see the word iteration, I want you to think loops or repetition. You're doing something many, many times. Some sort of operation many, many times as you're going through, say, for example, like an array or a string or something. Okay, so these are the two words that we have in our uh, question. So let's go ahead and see which two of these four answers would have both selection and iteration. Let's look at the first answer. This says an algorithm that given two integers displays the greater of the two integers. So I'm imagining that if we wrote code for this, it would be something like if a is greater than b, return a, else return B, you know, something like this. So we would have selection here, right? But we don't actually have any iteration. We're not looping or repeating over anything to 
return the value that we're looking for. So I would say that A is not one of the two answers that we're looking for. Next one is an algorithm that given a list of integers displays the number of even integers in the list. If we wanted to write the code for this, we would have, I'm not even gonna write this in Java, which is gonna be very loose, but like, uh, so we have some sort of a list and it has like some sort of numbers in it, I don't know, like two, five, seven, 10, whatever. And then we're gonna loop through that list, loop over list, um, if it's even, so uh, maybe we have some sort of uh, counter that's that we're gonna increment counter plus plus. I would say that this actually has both selection and iteration in it. So our selection is this if statement. So we only want to display the number of even integers. So we need to be selective about which numbers we're looking at. And then our iteration is this loop here where uh, we need to loop over every number in that list to get the number of even integers. So I would say that B is one of the right answers. Next says, an algorithm that given a list of integers displays only the negative integers in that list. So once again, we have some sort of list. Let's say negative five, seven, negative 10, three. Once again, to go through this list, we're gonna need to loop over it. So loop over list. Inside of that loop, we're gonna say, if it's less than zero, mm, less than zero. Maybe we have another list that we this to uh, and we append whatever value we're looking at currently within that loop and that's what's inside of our loop i would say that this once again has selection right so we need to check whether that value is negative if it's less than zero and it also has iteration right we need to loop over the list here look at every single element and then play only the negative enders in the list so i would say c is also a right answer. Just by process of elimination, I would say that D is not right, but let's go ahead and see why it's not right. All right, so with C, we're once again given a list of integers. So five, seven, three, 10. We need to display the sum of the integers in the list. So an algorithm like that, we might loop over the list. And then let's say we had some sort of sum variable we initialized. We're gonna do sum plus equals whatever x is, which is the value that we're looking at within our loop. And then that's all the logic that we actually really need to do. So I would say that we don't have selection here, right? We don't have any sort of conditional executions of stuff. We're just adding to some sort of sum. So there isn't, we're not selecting any paths here okay so we don't have selection we do however have iteration we're still looping over that list right we're still getting every value within the list to add to the sum but we needed to have both selection and iteration so the correct answer here is b and c our final question says a teacher uses the following program to adjust student grades on an assignment by adding five points to each student's original grade. However, if adding five points to a student's original grade causes the grade to exceed 100 points, the student will receive the maximum possible score of 100 points. The student's original grades are stored in the list grade list, which is indexed from 1 to N. Then we have a little segment of code. So we're basically setting I equal to 1. Then we're going to repeat our missing code N times and increment our i by one every time we go within the loop. Teacher has the following procedures available. Um, min, which accepts two variables and returns the lesser of the two values. And max, which takes in two values and returns the greater of the two. So this says, which of the following code segments can replace missing code? So the program works as intended. Something to point out here actually is it says select two answers. The first time I did this problem, I completely skipped over that. So what I did is I just selected the first solution that seemed to work for me. Make sure you're reading every part of the problem because stuff like that will get you. So let's go ahead and set up a fake grade list. Let's say our first student got like an 80. Let's say our second student got like a 97. Let's say the next one got like a 72. Okay, so this is indexed starting at from one to N. So this first one says that we're gonna grab the grade list at I. So if I is equal to one originally, that means we're gonna grab that first score. We're gonna set it equal to min of grade list at I plus five comma 100. 
this would basically be asking what is the minimum of 80 plus 5 and 100 so the minimum of 85 and 100 is going to be 85 so what we would do is we would just update this value here to be 85 cool yeah that seems really reasonable let's go ahead and check the next element in our grade list just to make sure it works with these problems i would say you want to test cases test more than one case right so um the problem kind of tells you that there is two different cases you can have where you'll be adding five points to the student's original score but if it's greater than 100 points they're going to receive the maximum of 100. so i would say make sure to test something where if you add five it'll be less than 100 if you add five it'll be greater than 100 just those two cases at minimum okay so then if we tested our next case it would be testing uh, 97 plus 5 so 97 plus 5 is 102 if we did the minimum of 102 and 100 we would get it is 100 so yeah i think that a would definitely work for this adjustment that we want to do because as soon as we got a score greater than 100 we set it to the maximum possible score which was 100 so i think that one works but remember it says select two answers so we have to keep looking so let's go ahead and set this back to 80. So this one is going to ask us to set the grade at that index equal to grade list at i. So that's one again, plus five comma 100. So this is gonna be the max of 85 comma 100. So I'm seeing a problem with this program. This is gonna end up setting this student's grade to be 100 because 100 is greater than 85. So what we're gonna end up getting this student and send the correct grade, which is 85, is 100. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that B is not a valid code segment because it didn't do that math correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and change this back to 80. Moving on to the next code segment. This one says we're gonna set grade list at I equal to grade list at I plus five grade list at one is equal to grade list at one plus five so that is 85 okay promising start then if grade list at i or one is greater than 100 so if 85 is greater than 100 uh, we're going to set grade list at i equal to grade list i minus five okay so since 85 is not greater than 100 we actually do not do this logic here so we're gonna just set that value equal to 85 so you might think that this works but this is why i always say test more than just one one case right because what's going to end up happening once we move on to the next number here so grade list at two we're setting grade list at two equal to 97 plus five so right now it's 102 temporarily so now 102 is actually greater than 100 so we're going to set this value here equal to 100 and grade list at two 102 minus five wait so we just went ahead and just return their score back to what it originally was. That wasn't what we wanted to do. We wanted to set that equal to 100. So this answer will not work. So in my process of elimination, I would say that D is a, our second correct answer, but let's go ahead and see why it is. So this is kind of the, this, this is the same as C, except for the logic inside the if statement is different. So now we have, we set grade list at I, equal to 100 instead of grade list at i minus 5. So let's go ahead and test it out with our first value again. So grade list at 1 is equal to grade list at 1 plus 5, so 80 plus 5. So we're setting grade list at 1 equal to 85. Is 85 greater than 100? No, it is not. So that value stays the same. That is correct. Let's move on to the second value in our list so that's grade list at two so we're setting grade list at two equal to grade list at two plus five so 95 plus five cool so we're at 102 is 102 greater than 100 yes it is so 
this means that we're going to be saving grade less at 2 equal to 100. And that is the correct logic that we need to limit our student to be at 100, which is the highest possible grade. So D is also the correct answer. So hopefully it helps you out with these AP Computer Science principles, multiple choice problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.